hello. I'm Gernot Pomrenke, and I'm hoping to give you a snapshot of the optoelectronics and photonics uh, portfolio. And uh, basically, we're you know, looking at the science and technology of photons, especially uh, toward applications in the area of information you know, processing, kind of novel you know, sensing, and computing. I think it's an area that has a lot of uh, innovation in it, you know, especially for you know, 21st you know, century uh, applications and uh, um, Possibilities, you know, for you know technological development, and there, uh, it's a, a enabling type of uh, area for military. You know, everything from uh, focal plane uh, arrays, uh, infrared, you know, detectors, uh, low energy, possibly low energy uh, uh, photonic uh, components, and uh, possibility of dressing, you know, swap, and which you know usually in the systems, you know, area, something that you hear. You know a lot about the uh, areas that uh, I'm going to be, you know, uh, covering. Like I say, it's, uh, optoelectronics and uh, photonics. Uh, basically, the uh, portfolio. Uh, focuses on exploring light matter interactions at the subwavelength and the nanoscale between metals, semiconductors, and insulators. And the intent is to explore optoelectronic information uh, processing, integrated photonics, and the associated optical and photonic uh, device components, and uh, with uh, emphasis there on air and space platforms for Air Force capabilities in computing, communications, storage, sensing, and surveillance. Surveillance. And a special focus on the program is to use nanotechnology in a type of a, approaches. Uh, the portfolio is basically broken up into six you know, different you know, areas, uh, which include the nanophotonics and plasmonics and uh, the various components you know, within that, some that you might have already heard of in some of the other you know, port uh, portfolios, but uh, you know, there's always a certain amount of uh, overlap on, on, on some of the uh, Various uh, portfolios, then the integrated photonics and silicon photonics uh, uh, sub area, and reconfigurable photonics and electronics. Then issues associated with fabricating, you know, photonics. So you know everything from some print to modeling and simulation tools, uh, 3D assembly, and then kind of optical approaches to quantum computing, and uh, finally terahertz sources and detectors. Uh, the program is uh, very vertically, you know, or, uh, oriented in the sense that you know we're addressing everything from you know basic you know physics, you know, kind of issues, the uh, light matter inter interactions, uh, materials, new materials, novel materials, engineered you know, materials, uh, various types of structures and so on, devices, uh, architect uh, architectures and uh, integration and, and processing. So as you know, kind of indicated, you know, the light matter interactions uh, at the sub wavelength and nanoscale you know, are uh, very much a major component you know, of the program, and uh, we're basically uh, focusing on the inorganic uh, and. Uh, so you know, you're especially as you go down into these particular you know dimensions, you're you know concerned about uh, you know how the electromagnetic fields you know interact you know at those particular dimensions, and you can get uh, a lot of nonlinearities and so on. Uh, one area, uh, as you saw in the uh, nanophotonics you know, area, was uh, in a, was uh, plasmonics, and so there are lots of issues associated with that, and you know trying to bring that you know. To uh, uh, chip and so on, from the understanding the various kind of losses and so on, to uh, trying to determine radiative recombinations and so on, and um, and then uh, there there's still you know kind of growth fab and uh, you know uh, and uh, kind of material issues in in this area and one one area that's still uh, very much a uh, research project is trying to determine or sort of trying to find a Silicon-based, you know, laser. Although last year we were able to, you know, uh, accomplish that with a germanium, you know, laser, but uh, you know, there's still some uh, some 
opportunities out there for trying to bring silicon uh, or bring photonics you know, to the silicon platform. Uh, so our focus areas, you know, it's basically trying to address power, speed type of you know, issues. Uh, again, opportunities here of uh, kind of new optical nanostructures and uh, opportunities for you know, engineered you know, type of materials and the area of uh, quantum behavior of light you know, at uh, various, uh, in various nanostructures. So uh, photonics, you know, continues, you know, I guess basically over the last, you know, 15 years, you know, there's been a very much a strong drive, you know, to, you know, that helped to drive growth and innovation. And uh, there's both a uh, national and international, you know, uh, a market, you know, for photonics. And there's lot, lots of worldwide R&D activity. And within the U.S., you know, telecom and datacom, you know, continue to be of, you know, uh, of interest. And uh, and strength, uh, as is uh, I, I guess, or as our you know intermachine kind of you know, interconnects. Uh, but there's a lot of competition you know out there, and uh, there are lots of national initiatives. And uh, we in the U.S. revisited it uh, you know just uh, a year ago, or a little bit over a year ago, with the National Photonics uh, Initiative. So trying to address various challenges you know in, in the area, everything from materials you know to source. Uh, interconnects, uh, etc. Uh, but you know, for the military, there are also lots of interesting and uh, exciting uh, uh, possibilities with RF, you know, photonics and avionics, you know, systems. And uh, then, of course, the interesting thing is that uh, the SOI silicon, you know, is kind of emerging as a major platform you know, for, for this particular technology. And, uh, and of course, the uh, source, the, the, la the silicon-based laser is still very much an issue. And uh, I've helped to work on that problem for uh, three decades. And uh, so uh, you know, still, still pushing it. So uh, opportunities you know, exist uh, with uh, trying to bring photonics into the CMOS, uh, to, together with you know, CMOS you know, electronics. And uh, you know, as you can see from the chart, there, there are lo lots of benefits as to you know, why you want to do that. So uh, uh, drivers within the portfolio and trying to uh, uh, kind of move the portfolio forward in, in different you know, directions or everything from you know, that uh, kind of influence you know so, some of the things that you know we do in our kind of uh, major reports, DoD reports, you know that uh, came out uh, or that were uh, requested by Mr. Lemnios, who was at uh, was the AS or the OSD head uh, uh, for his electronic warfare you know report. And so there are lots of things in, in that particular report you know that you know uh, go in the direction of integrated you know photonics, and then as uh, indicated that uh, we're very much engaged with the National Photonics Initiative, and uh, we provided a lot of input for the National Academy studies. You know that uh, actually kind of laid the groundwork, you know, for this particular initiative. And so now we're very much engaged. You know, everything from government-related things to working with uh, the, the various uh, uh, professional organizations in, in trying to uh, drive it in, in, in certain in the directions. Uh, certainly, you know. Uh, uh, kind of planning workshops and uh, uh, reviews and, and so on. They help to kind of sharpen the direction, you know, in, in certain areas. And then, of course, there's a lot of interactions, you know, within the program. Uh, well, uh, uh, within the program, that's one, one thing that's maybe not going to be too clear uh, with, with a presentation is that uh, besides having extramural programs, we also have uh, in this, so uh, these are uh, efforts like at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base or at uh, up uh, in Rome, New York. 
And <clears throat> certainly uh, trends, you know, like trend charts and so on, I know you can't really, you know, uh, read that, you know, but, you know, uh, on the lower uh, left, you know, there, there's kind of comparison between hybrid silicon and indium phosphide as to kind of directions. The, the center one kind of addresses uh, issues associated with, you know, power, the amount of power that, for example, uh, the uh, data uh, storage farms you know, take up, and so we have to basically, we really have to think or rethink, uh, you know, about uh, some of the directions that we're going with some of the devices and so on, as the amount of power that we're using, you know, especially that some states, like uh, we understand, or a state of Oregon, 15% of all of the power, you know, goes toward data storage, you know, farms. And uh, so there are, you know, issues there that actually play very much into the National Photonics Initiative, you know, that we're trying to address, uh, you know, you know, issues associated with, you know, low power, you know, kind of uh, uh, solutions. And then, of course, in integration you know, and so on, as the direction that we've been going with, you know, having individual devices and so on, and then trying to glue those devices together, and now we're trying to integrate it all on, on, on a chip. Uh, what, uh, on a recent uh, uh, meeting, uh, issues came up with, you know, metrics uh, for, for the program, and, you know, there are really no defined metrics as such, even though I have some charts here as to, you know, we're moving with photonics to, to smaller, you know, dimensions and, and lower power and so on, but, you know, as you see from the different, you know, sub areas and so on, that, you know, each area is somewhat unique, you know, and so in some of the areas, you know, be it, you know, detectors, you know, that uh, kind of evolve out of the program and so on, there are certain kind of metrics associated with that, you know, or be it waveguides or uh, the speed uh, on some of the computing, you know, components and so on. So there is no overall metric besides maybe pushing, you know, going to smaller, you know, d d dimensions. So uh, what I'm going to try to do here is to address uh, various types of uh, accomplishments and achievements, you know, within, you know, the programs, the different type, type of uh, directions. And uh, the chart to kind of focus on is uh, the one on the right. We're uh, kind of looking kind of uh, uh, into the future here, you know, as to the drive of, of the program. Uh, of course, you know, there are opportunities that come along, you know, that, you know, changes, you know, some of the directions and so on, but you know we're we're looking at uh, somewhat uh, near-term type of issues in the area of you know silicon photonics and uh, bringing three five you know uh, together with you know uh, silicon uh, and uh, plasmonic type of photonics and. Uh, program in quantum metaphotonics, and then the area of very few photons or single photon uh, kind of applications. And um, but I'm going to you know, highlight, you know, so everything from kind of looking, you know, with a uh, uh, <clears throat> Looking at more complex you know, systems to uh, area of reconfigurable uh, circuits uh, to material issues, integration of you know three fives you know into uh, silicon, and <clears throat> some of the things that we're doing, like say in uh, with plasmonics, uh, nano lasers, uh, so kind of low power. I guess that's you know one thing with you know, like uh, Howard Schlossberg's portfolio and mine. I guess if you're going to differentiate, he. Has has the power, you know, I have, I guess, the, 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 the low power, so, you know, so, <laughs> so, but then Howard has been around a long time, and so I guess he deserves all the power he can get, so, and um, so, and then finally, you know, uh, they're uh, kind of quantum dot architecture uh, in, in this particular, you know, area. So, uh, we have this program with uh, Professor Hochberg at the University of Delaware, where uh, it's called OPSIS. I mean, uh, he's, he also has a P case and so on, but uh, uh, where he does some wonderful things you know, also you know, in, in this area. But uh, you know, uh, many of you are probably familiar with the kind of uh, shared shuttle uh, service you know, in the electronics area called MOSES. And so this is somewhat a, a, a play or 
or a uh, offshoot you know, uh, of that particular area. And it's an area where we're trying to bring uh, integrated photonics you know, to the uh, academic community, to uh, DOD uh, facilities, and small business. Because really when it comes down to it that uh, you know, the, the, uh, to get into that uh, you know, area, it's a matter of billions of dollars of investment. And so there's uh, a lot of missed opportunities for the academic you know, uh, uh, community and for the small business you know, community for kind of innovation and, and so on you know, to uh, push into integrating uh, photonics. You know, they can do small demonstrations in the lab and so on, but uh, actually demonstrating, putting you know, kind of complex systems together on a chip, on a, on a big wafer and so on, uh, that's, uh, it is too costly. And so this is an opportunity to maybe bring down the cost by actually a uh, order of, well, uh, a factor of 100. So, uh, as indicated, there is an opportunity for shared fabrication for silicon photonics. And so we're right now uh, in silicon photonics, we're kind of uh, where CMOS was in the 1970s. And, um, and so uh, using, you know, silicon and, uh, well, uh, why did silicon uh, win, you know, for electronics? Well, it was the best uh, platform for integrating, you know, systems. And so we've uh, now, been kind of observing a Moore's law growth with uh, kind of uh, the number of components that we can put, you know, on, on the chip. So there's kind of a uh, this this movement toward complexity of having more complex uh, devices, and so you know, kind of doubling, you know. Uh, Every year, and uh, and in a way, for for this particular program, you know, it's uh, not that critical to make things that much smaller. You know, it's this is more, you know, for what we're thinking about with you know plasma plasmonics and a uh, few photon, single photon, you know, kind of uh, ideas. But because we're already at this particular point with this particular program, that for a, a particular wafer, you know, we can put up to almost two million, you know, type of devices. So. Uh, there is a possibility here for um, for for uh, letting the community, you know, uh, take advantage of this and and move innovation. And uh, so, since we kind of started on this road, you know, in 2011, uh, 2010, 2011, you know, as such, you know, we've you know, been able to uh, for for this kind of shared uh, user uh, or shared uh, uh, process, uh, kind of multi project wafers uh, as such, we've been able to now already attract uh, on the order of 150 uh, users. And one thing I should say for the uh, South American logos there that we've had help with our uh, so, uh, uh, southern office in San Diego, uh, Brett Pekinas, you know, he helped to uh, motivate, you know, and interest, you know, some of the people, you know, in, in this particular program. And so, uh, you know, the, the word is getting out. And uh, it turns out actually this particular program you know, has been uh, very much a stimulation you know, for the whole community worldwide. You know that uh, the IMAC, you know, people uh, in, in, in Belgium, you know, they have seen this as you know throwing down the gauntlet. You know that you know uh, you know there's so much you know going on with this with moving this area forward. You know that they're uh, increasing their investments by you know uh, factors of ten to to fifty, and so that has been a problem. Here with, with this you know program that you know there have been uh, uh, challenges from the outside you know that, uh, that others that have maybe more resources and so you know we were kind of in a, in a state of flux here as to how this is going to move you know forward because there is you know a, a competition so um, anyway you know uh, part of the things that we're doing in this you know has helped to, to drive the process and tool development and standardization you know in, in this you know area and you know what they offer is basically 
actually kind of a building block of very uh, various uh, types of photonic you know components you know that can then be coupled together they work with uh, you know we're helping to develop you know some of the tools that you know they work with with cadence uh, uh, so a mentor uh, and uh, that are electronic design you know org organizations and uh, so uh, if you sign up you know with them they make all of their you know libraries and tools you know available you know and then you know everything is you know put put together and then finally you know shipped uh, shipped out to a foundry to be you know processed and uh, uh, there are lots of records that have been set you know with what they've been able you know, to, to, to do from extremely low loss silicon you know uh, modulators you know to a 2.4 in a terabit per second transceiver you know that's uh, been developed and uh, uh, you know, as you can see you know, also some some of the uh, speeds you know, associated with uh, uh, going over fiber for, with WDM. Uh, interesting is, okay, so now I'll switch to a, another program with uh, Professor Zhu at uh, Rice University that uh, the OPSIS program is helping, you know, some of the other uh, uh, programs within the portfolio, you know, to take some of their ideas, you know, forward. And uh, so in this particular case, we have a, you know, in, in trying to kind of uh, overcome the limitations of kind of conventional and optical, you know, logic. So th there's this uh, matrix, you know, kind of configuration here of a kind of a double ring based optical switch that uh, serves as a uh, kind of unit you know over here but uh, the this particular program the integrated uh, uh, or the the opsis you know program you know is uh, allowing you know this to be then you know demonstrated you know on on the chip and so you know we're in the process of actually uh, analyzing the results you know of that uh, so besides you know the, the optical uh, the optical you know, logic you know element there we're also trying to address you know issues associated with uh, you know a bit higher level you know <clears throat> you know so you have this silicon photonics you know platform so what you know what can you do to help I improve some of these things you know by you know looking at different kinds of uh, architecture so you know that you might you know think about you know being just things being lateral you know that you might you know have uh, various three dimensional approaches various layers and, and so we're uh, uh, trying to uh, look at also the multi-core you know issues of uh, systems on, on, a, on a chip you know with some of the design tools you know being developed by Professor Pasruja at uh, CSU. Um, opportunities in the program for looking at new materials so uh, silicon germanium tin or it's not just silicon germanium tin but also silicon tin germanium tin you know and, and so on and uh, so there's an electronic uh, component here that there's some interesting opportunities of being a able to manipulate the system here for like a st uh, strain control and so on that could ben uh, benefit the CMOS, you know, for various types of uh, 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 transistors uh, development. But you know, we're we're focused, you know, on the uh, on the optical, you know, side and the photonic, you know, side. And so uh, fact that you have variable, you know, band gap. Uh, from uh, or wavelength, you can translate the, the uh, energy to the, the wavelength from 1.1 micron to 11, you know, micron, and you have opportunity, you know, because of this particular, you know, system, you know, as, as you as you see, you know, you know where they sit. Uh, <clears throat> You know, of being able to do kind of strain engineering, and uh, so this uh, first group four material with a very widely tunable 2D compositional you know space. So uh, lo lots of opportunities. Uh, uh, pre in a previous life at, uh, at DARPA, we also explored the silicon germanium carbon you know system, uh, but uh, there were all kinds of you know problems of trying to keep the carbon in there. Could never get it uh, above uh, uh, two percent. 
uh, but uh, uh, actually uh, the putting tin into the system ha has been a challenge for uh, for decades and so we've been able to actually crack you know uh, uh, crack uh, 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 the, the, the problems you know, associated with it. So uh, basically about three, th three different you know, areas uh, you know, that, uh, that oh, I, I guess I should address since I have a picture you know, there. You know, uh, one of the you know, issues that I mentioned you know, uh, up front is uh, uh, trying to pursue silicon-based you know, laser. And uh, so one of the uh, problems, of course, in the silicon-based system is that you're dealing with an indirect band Gap, you know, material, and so you're, you're forever trying to find, a, you know, uh, some kind of a direct band gap, you know, solution. And so uh, this particular uh, uh, system, the silicon germanium tin system, you know, allows you to uh, to go in that particular direction of trying to in, in getting a direct band gap uh, material if you can get the uh, tin up enough. And so there are opportunities there, like I say, from the uh, electronics, you know, to uh, various uh, very efficient. Uh, detectors and emitters and their opportunities in focal plane arrays, uh, potentially even uh, replacing uh, 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 Merkat uh, cadmium tellurite uh, de uh, detectors. And so uh, various uh, challenges uh, exist uh, in trying to get the tin up as to uh, the the mole fraction there of um, I'll try to push it up you know uh, to uh, above uh, fourteen percent um, in trying to come up with other uh, or different types of uh, tin sources and just uh, the, the fundamental understanding and so within the program what we've been trying to do is kind of build a, a team you know the, to address those and so we've been able to support some activities with uh, Jim Kaladze at the uh, University of Delaware with Co uh, John Kubitatis at uh, Arizona State University and then even within uh, the Air Force Research Lab, uh, uh, Bruce Claflin um, is uh, developing a remote plasma enhanced CVD you know, system you know, to uh, take the material system into the IR you know, regime. So, some, uh, so uh, I mentioned you know, that uh, so this is kind of hot off the press, you know, that uh, we were trying to push f uh, over 14%, so we've been able to achieve that with uh, MBE growth, and uh, have been able to uh, kind of fabricate you know, various uh, germanium tin, germanium heterogeneous junctions and so that's kind of key for for some of these you know devices and uh, showing some you know good performance here you know especially as you you, you can kind of move the photo response you know, depending as to you know how you mix the the tin and, and, and the silicon and also uh, some uh, preliminary results in IR emission from uh, germanium tin and, uh, and uh, as, as indicated you know uh, source development is very much you know part of this and so as a, another, uh, this is a CVD, you know, approach, and uh, through various. Uh, actually, th this particular program is very much a, a kind of a poster child for uh, experimentalists and theoreticians, you know, working to, you know, together. So uh, a lot of uh, modeling simulation uh, uh, that uh, allowed uh, kind of a prediction of uh, what particular isomers, you know, to use uh, to 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 finally to be able to come up with the germanium silicon tin, you know, uh, structure and. Um, uh, their particular approach, you know, I, I guess I, I don't know the, uh, currently, uh, uh, right now I don't remember the, the details on it, uh, but they required uh, kind of a deuterium or deuterated, you know, uh, tin uh, as uh, as one of the, the sources, you know, to allow this to, to happen. And so that was one of the challenges before that uh, the, this the, this element of it was, was missing, and this was enough of a break through that you know the their, the work has been highlighted in the semiconductor you know, science and technology and uh, and devices are coming that with a very good uh, photo response 
Okay, so as uh, you know, indicated, you know that you know we're kind of looking at uh, silicon photonics, you know, and but we're also looking at hybrid approaches, and so here we're trying to uh, address the issues or challenges associated with putting three five materials on onto silicon, and so this is a clever way here of. Uh, Doing nano pillars, you know, on a silicon, you know, platform, so nano pillars of uh, of uh, three five material. So these are basically kind of gallium arsenide pillars uh, with uh, indium phosphide, you know, uh, uh, shell, uh, which which helps. Uh, 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 well, uh, there is the indium gallium phosphide shell that helps with uh, uh, demonstrating the very uh, low leakage, you know, currents. And and, the, and if you're going to have these on chip and so on, you know, you need waveguides and so on. And they have been actually looking at using also these nano pillars uh, as uh, you know, carrying the signal from, you know, from one component to other. So, and uh, it turns out that you can actually do it with you know just four, four of these pillars you know across you know to maintain the mode you know within you know that particular uh, type of waveguide. Uh, another accomplishment. Uh, this uh, this just basically in the three five you know systems has been uh, demonstrating smaller than wavelength you know cubed uh, so you know uh, uh, so again sub we're trying to go in the sub wavelength you know uh, regime uh, and so this has been a challenge you know for for years and so we've demonstrated uh, with Professor Ning at ASU on a uh, CW emission at room temperature uh, with very nice uh, uh, line width Okay, so uh, moving now again into the sub-wavelength you know, regime, to smaller you know, regime. Uh, this is you know, trying to use plasmonics uh, to you know, address you know, uh, going into that particular direction. And what you have here is a noble metal, you know, the, the gray you know, areas here that is being crossed by a, um, a semiconductor you know, material, and in this, in this particular case, cadmium you know, sulfide. And so there is a, um, at that intersection, there is a kind of a cavity that is, is formed, and uh, a laser, uh, laser cavity. And as a result of the losses, however, in the cavity, you're actually able to emit then in one uh, in a particular direction. And uh, so they're also able to demonstrate uh, modulation, you know, of these plasmon you know, lasers. And uh, so this is exciting uh, new, new opportunity uh, for you know, going, you know, again uh, in, into these smaller dimensions and sub, you know, into the nano laser, you know, uh, area. A, uh, I guess, a broader, you know, program, a large program, uh, to to look at all the different kind of components and trying to put them together is a, a, a MURI program uh, focused on plasmonics for extremely or extreme light, you know, concentration, and so all all the different, you know, components here, you know, uh, are down in the uh, nano regime, and so we're, we're doing everything here from, you know, trying to develop, you know, the the sources, you know, to uh, modulators, and uh, even looking at uh, optomechanical, you know, systems, you know, for for modulating you know, the the signal, and then uh, kind of clever no uh, novel ways of, you know, uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, detectors in, in that particular regime, and so we've been able to demonstrate uh, putting a, uh, a gallium arsenide-based uh, quantum well source uh, at uh, at the entrance of this you know slot you know here, and we've been able to you know uh, you know send this signal there, be able to, to detect it with you know some of the slot you know antennas and. Uh, uh, so, some other ways of being able to, to pick off you know the, the, the signal. 
there was a interest in uh, looking at kind of uh, thin structures. Uh, uh, so I guess it's maybe a, t a bit difficult to, to see here, but anyway, it's just, just by chance of you know trying to uh, look at uh, some of these uh, kind of slots and and thin type of you know structures and so on that uh, they found that there was a kind of interesting response, kind of a resonance response by using some of the uh, various type of semiconductor material. And so this uh, came from the Miller Group at, at Stanford. And so there's some in interesting uh, ways at the nano regime to, uh, to pick up uh, uh, well, for, for a photo detector. And if you uh, engineer you know, different size uh, fins and so on, you can then have a kind of a multiple uh, de detectors uh, on, the, on the substrate. So kind of, uh, uh, I guess I'm kind of running out of you know, time here, but you know, th this is a project uh, here focused again on uh, few photons, single photon uh, type of uh, you know, applications that a, a key element of this is actually the, just the being able to precisely place quantum dots uh, on this kind of uh, a matrix and you basically have uh, a pump here where you know, it interacts with the quantum dots here. They generate you know, photons and then there's these uh, switches uh, as kind of you know, based on the uh, um, kind of quantum confined Stark effect. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's, it's a kind of a, a novel you know, approach to it. This and, uh, so key to this, of course, is the chemistry of being able to have a quantum dot and then putting the proper uh, size shell you know, on it and uh, ultimately placing it on, on the substrate. Uh, anyway, some of these things have been uh, uh, produced and we're able to actually also do some quantum dot uh, voxels you know, out of that. But uh, again, the key is you know, trying to place them on, uh, on the surface and trying to understand you know, that you know, these are the right uh, uh, quantum dots and, and, and uh, core shells or the nano you know, particles and so on. And so there's some clever microscopy uh, 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 approaches you know, to this that allows them to um, uh, to place the the, the, the proper uh, particles, you know, on the surface. Uh, ultimately, there are opportunities here besides, you know, uh, some of the initial things that they've been doing on, on the oxides, you know, to move also maybe into using the uh, nitrogen vacancy centers in, in nano diamonds, uh, zinc oxides, uh, uh, you know, etc. Uh, always within the program, lots of uh, technology transitions, and uh, be it uh, students and uh, going to EFRL, even professors, even though we're, they're transferring in the wrong direction. But um, uh, in the area of nanomembranes, we've uh, had an opportunity to uh, interest the Air Combat Command. And so there, as we speak, there's a, uh, a workshop you know, being you know, planned on flexible you know, electronics. And uh, Professor Capasso, with the work that he did on, with quantum cascade lasers and so on, is working with, with a company you know, for, to be part of their spectrometer you know, that you know, they're looking at. Uh, lots of interactions you know, here within uh, Air Force OSR uh, and uh, within the Air Force Research Lab. You know, so I basically interact with almost all of the uh, different directions uh, directorates within Air Force Research Lab, and of course uh, outside of uh, uh, Air Force OSR or the, the the DoD, we also interact with you know the National Science Foundation, uh, DOE, uh, NASA, etc. Internationally, there are also interactions, and uh, you know I, I did mention you know people that do that. Uh, uh, people at the London office and uh, also at the San Diego and the Tokyo office that, that help you know, that particular in, in, interaction. Um, these are kind of directions you know, that the portfolio you know, is going. As you can see, we're going to be doing less with uh, the terahertz. And uh, so uh, kind of in concluding you know, here, I hope you got you know, some, some sense here what we're trying to do with the program, that we're trying to move uh, photonics into the sub-wavelength 
regime nanostructures, uh, looking at uh, engineered materials, doing things like strain engineering, band gap, you know, engineering. But of course, a, a big component here is looking, you know, at this whole idea of uh, integrated photonics, silicon photonics, you know, and, and a shared rapid, uh, a stable shuttle you know, process. There are transformation, uh, 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 part of that transformational opportunities in millimeter wave and RF photonics and uh, opportunities for, for the future. Air Force OSR has been a big player in uh, nanophotonics as they have in the area of uh, uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology and uh, we will especially uh, right now with the National Photonics Initiative we'll you know, continue to do that. Thank you very much. Before he gets into his second talk, are there any questions on this one? The Opsis uh, Silicon Photonics Foundry. Is that at the University of Delaware or somewhere else? <clears throat> it's located, you know, uh, with the University of Delaware. So it's separate, but it's located there uh, at the University of Delaware. So that's just the design. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. The, 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 the shuttle assembly. Sir, yes, but not the foundry. Yeah, the foundry itself is located in Singapore. I, IME that they're using. Originally, they wanted to use, you know, uh, or were considering IMAC, but you know, I. IME, you know, was, you know, uh, was being considered. But uh, actually, I should uh, go back and say, originally, it was, the intent was to use BAE right here in Manassas, Virginia. But then BAE pulled out, you know, about a year and a half ago, and now it was, uh, uh, IBM was going to do it next year, and now they pulled, you know, pulled out, and so we kind of have IME and then IMAC, you know, and uh, we're trying to figure that out as to where, where to go for on, uh, uh, onshore uh, capability. Any other questions? All right, let's thank our speaker again. Okay, now he'll go into his uh, second.